Okay, Mark chapter 11, verse 12. And on the morrow, when they had come from, the, from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off had been leaves, he came, happy he would find anything thereon. When he came to it, found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And it's funny because he comes to this fig tree. Bethany means house of figs. This tree pictures Israel. Fig leaf. From the time of Adam and Eve, they took fig leaves and made an apron. Pictures self-righteousness. They took the fig leaves and they covered themselves, which was not approved by God. An animal had to die, which with the Bible would be probably a lamb. The, the fig tree represents the nation of Israel. Here he comes and he finds the tree has the leaves, but there's no fruit. Now, at the time of figs, is not yet. Well, in the law was you would not, if you think of the book of Ruth, you would not completely reap your entire harvest. You would leave some for the fatherless, for the widows, for the Gentiles. You could not do what they do today and, you know, wipe the tree clean or wipe the crops clean of fruit. So what Jesus is doing, okay, I'll come up to this tree and the time is, in other words, he's looking for old fruit. It's not the time of new fruit. He's looking for old fruit. New fruit hasn't come yet. The new fruit will be after his death, burial, and resurrection. The old fruit, the Old Testament, there's nothing. Jesus answered and said, No man eat the fruit the hereafter forever. So, it's, it also points to a new dispensation coming. And his disciples heard it. We're going out with the Old Testament and coming in with the New Testament. As soon as he dies, that's the New Testament. Even in the tribulation period, the law is back, but... It's the law and the blood of Jesus. Today, it's the blood of Jesus and nothing. Tribulation, it's the law and the blood of Jesus. So it's not entirely the Old Testament in the tribulation. This whole thing hunkers down just by one, one tree in the house of figs that there is none. And they come to Jerusalem. He's already been there. He, he goes back to, and it comes back the next day. That Jesus went into the temple. All right, here's the temple. Here's the building. And began to cast them out that sold and bought in the temple. And what they're doing is they're selling the animal sacrifices. They're selling everything that has to do with that sacrifices. And they're violating the book of Proverbs where Solomon said you can't have diverse weights. What they're doing is they're cheating the people. The people are not getting the right goods for the right amount of money. The exchangers that we're going to look at in a moment is they're not properly giving the exchange rate. They are charging the people to, to, to exchange the money. They had a, a Roman coin. They had the temple money. Because the Jews did not believe in imagery and idolatry, so they would not receive a coin that had a face on it. But the Jewish people today have no problem taking American money, which has nothing but dead presidents. We're the only nation that puts dead people in our coins. So, as far as the goods, as far as the money, the common person was getting swindled. He went to the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers. I mean, they were not given the full value. So there goes the tables being kicked over and the seats of them that sold doves. Doves were part of the sacrifice 
And they were selling those doves on outrageous fees. He would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Now, it's interesting because any taught, teaches, says to him, is it not written, my house shall be called the, of the nations, that's the Gentile. The Gentiles will call this house a house of prayer. Jeremiah 7, 11. That's the heathen. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Have you ever heard the saying today in the church? Well, if Jesus came in the church today, he'd be kicking over the tables and knocking down the... Uh, did you hear that? Your church is not the temple. Any church today is not the temple. I'll tell you what Jesus would do. Look at Revelation. Here's what Jesus would do with, with the Bible. Revelation chapter 3. A building, a group of people, not the temple. It's, a, it's amusing to, that's to see some people call their, their building, and I see on Facebook, and I, you know, the temple. Or, no, the body is your temple, not that building. Well, you know, yeah, and everybody in your assembly are saved. Everybody. And 320, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. I'll tell you what Jesus would do with the church today. He wouldn't even go in. The church is a closed door to Jesus Christ today. That's our church period. Glad to see him. Go back to Mark. You can't be putting your church as a, as a temple and running, quoting the Old Testament and everything. So the temple that's here before 70 AD by Jesus Christ is, you guys are in thievery. And it's kind of funny because the two men that died with Jesus on the cross were thieves. All right, so I mean, if you want to count yourself, are you telling me that your church assembly, your church building, you are thieves? Is that what you're saying? Please tell me who you are so, so I will not attend your building, your service. You're going to be a bunch of thieves. So he's in the temple. And the scribes, those in charge of the, of the, of the, of the scriptures and everything, the chief priests, knows how there's plural, only well, supposed to be one, heard it. They heard what Jesus done and saw how they may destroy him, Jesus. Not kill him. Not ostracize him. Not kick him out. They want to destroy him. For they feared him. And this is not a godly fear because... Solomon says in Proverbs, you know, the fear of the Lord is beginning the wisdom, the fear of the Lord is beginning the understanding. This is not that kind of fear. Because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. They're afraid of the people. Notice the people, the Jews. The leaders of Israel were afraid of the Hebrews, the Jews. Rome was afraid of the Hebrews. <laughs> you didn't mess with the Hebrews. And when even was come, night, he went out of the city. So he goes in Jerusalem, comes out of Jerusalem, comes back in Jerusalem, and then leaves Jerusalem. In the morning, back 6 a.m., as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. It's dead. Now, for the fact is that Israel, Israel's not dead. Um... Job says, he says, if, if a tree were to die and still has the roots in the ground and get a scent of water, it shall grow. When it gets the water of life, that nation of Israel is going to grow again. And it will produce the fruit. And Peter called to remembrance, said unto the master, 
Behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. You know, hey, look at the tree, Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Notice that he said that to the Pope. If Peter's the first Pope. You know what, you know what Jesus says to the Roman Catholic Pope that they say is the Pope? I don't. He says, Depart from me, Satan. And if you had faith in God, <laughs> that's the kind of man you're going to build your church on? Your religion? For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed. All right, get out of here, mountain. And be thou cast into the sea, shall no doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. All right, somebody's got faith. Walk up to that mountain, say that mountain, go in the river, go in the sea, go in the ocean. You got great faith? Are you going to move a mountain? Don't get so high on yourself. I'm not saying you don't have faith. But don't boast of your faith. Because the great faith of Jesus was testified by Peter. Did he move a mountain? No, he killed a plant. He said to the tree, no fruit come from, let no man eat from you. Boom, it died. You want to try that one? Oh, I know there are some people like me who kill plants. You just, you just don't have that green thumb. I ain't, I'm talking about with your mouth. You see, the, the, the one that said, let no man eat of you, and it died, Peter said it, is the same that said, let there be light. Let there be water. Let there be land. Let there be cows. Let there be ostriches. Let there be kangaroo. Let us make man. That's the one. Well, we say, why didn't Jesus do that? Because he's part flesh and part God. Part God, part flesh, 100%, 100%. He's not going to show forth that kind of deity while in the flesh. Not his time. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, ye shall have them. So one of the things to prayer that we don't get, we, we don't really believe that God's going to answer. But you got to remember too, okay, I pray to God and I didn't get it. Well, God says yes, God says no, and God says not now. Now, I've always said this, God is not a bubblegum machine. You don't pop in your your, 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 your prayer quarter, put it in a slot, and then, you know, you get a bubblegum. Many would complain because they didn't get the blue one. They got the white one. That's not how prayer works. There are many testimonies, many, that people have prayed and they've died and gone off to glory. And after that, time after that, that prayer was answered. One minute, I forget his name, but with, with the Bible, Lord God opened the eyes of the king of, of, of England. Well, that prayer was answered after the guy was martyred. And we have forth the King James Bible. And when you say, when you stand praying, forgive. Okay, now you got to, if you don't forgive, you're not going to get a prayer. If you have ought against any, not just Jewish, any. Peter had a prejudice against the Gentiles. Acts chapter 10. That your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So, in the context of what we see with the scriptures is, in the law, 
if you didn't forgive, you weren't for being forgiven. In the church age, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then if we confess our sins, he is able and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. But there's still that, you know what, you can't be a hypocrite. You better have a forgiving spirit for God to forgive you. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And are you going to run to the run to the church with that one? You got to be careful. Are you telling me that the blood of Jesus Christ God can't cleanse? God can't cleanse. He can't forgive. First John one nine. And they come again to Jerusalem. They're in Jerusalem, they leave. They're in Jerusalem, they leave. They're in Jerusalem. As he's walking in the temple, there came to him chief priests and the scribes and the elders. This is the next day after the ruckus. And they say unto him, By what authority does thou these things? What thing? The tables are knocked over. The money spewed out over the place. Those chairs are knocked over. The ruckus you did yesterday. All these people are complaining. We had that with the farmer's market. Well, what gives you this authority to be here screaming and yelling at us? The Bible. Well, look at the ruckus. People don't come here. We're not selling anything. So what did they do? They, they, they get the police. What did they do? They went and got the chief priests and the scribes. Don't think if you're going to be in any kind of public ministry, they're going to love you. If they do love you, you got something wrong. If your church assembly is well liked in your community, you are not going to hear well done. No, you're not. Because you got your well done from the city, from the town. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Many of the churches today don't suffer persecution. Jesus said, I will ask you one question and answer me. And I will tell you by what authority I do to you. Listen, the authority is God. He is the authority. But he says, listen, the baptism of John. Well, John's been long dead. Was it from heaven? Or was it a man? Answer me. Was John called... To do his baptism. Was he called by God in heaven? He was. Or was it a man, a, a thing of men? Was it a religion? It wasn't a religion. The Catholics are religion. Jehovah's Witnesses are religion. The Mormons are a re religion. The Muslims, they're, a, they're all an organization developed by men. Not God. There are Baptist churches out there today. They are established not by God, but by men. Answer me. And they reason with themselves, saying, if we say from heaven, God, he shall say, why, why then do you not believe him, John? If you would believe, John, I am the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, there's your authority. That's what he's saying. If you believe, John, you would not have asked me that question. But they didn't. But if we shall say of men, this is through the chief priests and scribes, they feared the people for all the men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. So it was so what they just said. All right, if it's of heaven of God, he's gonna say, Why didn't we believe him? 
If we say of men, the people are going to say, that man was a prophet of God. It's not of man. So what they have already answered themselves is, Jesus is God. Jesus is not a religion. But we don't want Jesus to tell us he's of God. And we don't want the people to be angry with us. Because John was a prophet. And John was a prophet. He's a prophet of heaven, of God. Not of man. Have you wondered how many of these religions that pop up, how they have prophetess and prophets that are the source and foundation of their religion? My belief in Jesus and the Father is not a prophet. The foundation is Jesus Christ, God himself. Now, God used prophets, but the prophet is not my source. The prophet is only a proof of my faith in God and everything that he's done. And the answer is said unto Jesus, chief priests and scribes, we cannot tell. <laughs> You're not going to tell. Because either answer, you will condemn yourself. The thing is, they know who Jesus is. They just don't want to admit it. They think if they were to acknowledge Jesus who, is, who he is, they would lose their job, they would lose their position, but if they weren't so wicked, they would not have because in the millennium, they're still under Christ. They're still that priesthood of, of Zadok. They're still the chief priest. They're still the priests. They're still the Levites. But these men here and the scribes, and all, they have corrupted the office. They have corrupted the temple. We just saw it. Here is God manifested in the flesh the fulfillment of the scriptures, the scribes. And they don't dare profess the truth. Like what's going on in the churches today, what's going on in the governments today. They will not profess the truth. They will twist the truth. And you can't say God bless America. And you can't say that God, you know, he holds the world in his hand. No, he don't. And the answer said unto Jesus, we cannot tell. No, you don't want to tell. And Jesus answered and said to him, neither do I tell you by what authority I do anything. Because it's in the answer, and you said the answer when you got in your little shingdang and you got in your little little circle there. Jesus already perceived, Jesus already knew from the foundation of the world what your answer would be. And the answer would be, he is the authority, no matter how you answered it. So, and many people will run to the church age. You don't have chief priests. You don't have the scribes. And if you do, you failed in dispensation. 